Hello everyone. So welcome to this new session and uh, we are going to start today with the new module. That is the fourth module of this subject, Electromagnetic Theory. Okay. So here we are going to discuss few of the concepts and uh, we are going to, uh, from other side of on some the upper some upcoming sessions, we are going to solve many, many problems as well. Okay. So this is the module four, that is force on a moving charge density, that is basically the force you can say the module name is force in short okay so now in this fourth module so we are going to discuss many many concepts and uh, the first concept which we are going to cover is force on a moving charge okay so now what is this force on a moving charge okay so now let's see what is this force or some force on a moving charge so now we can uh, start with if a charge particle is set free in an electric field e that is, if, if a particular electron or a charge species is set free in an electric field, that is, it is uh, uh, left in an electric field in a random space without any direction, without any particular direction, it is accelerated in the direction of E. That is, if it is uh, set free in an electric field E, wherever the direction of electric field goes, in the same way the charge particle follows that same direction itself. So, we can say that it is accelerated in the direction of E. Okay. We know that we have a relation that is force is equal to E times E, okay. That is force is equal to Q times E, okay. This we have, we, we, we are knowing this relation, okay. So, this relation, uh, name it as equation 1, okay. And after that also, we know that F is equal to M into A, okay. That is force is equal to mass into acceleration, where this M indicates the mass quantity and this uh, A indicates the acceleration, okay. You might be knowing this, that is the... Uh, uh, you, you might have studied this uh, relation as well that is force is equal to mass into acceleration. So, this equation here I have written it and named it as equation 2. Okay, so now from 1 and 2, we can say that we can equate these two terms that is mass into acceleration m into a vector is equal to e times e. Okay, so that's why I have equated here these two terms. Okay, so now m, is, m into a is equal to e times e. So, therefore, the acceleration part. Uh, if we take it to one side so and bring, bring this marks to other side, so what we will be getting? E divided by M times E, okay? So, this is one expression for acceleration again, okay? So, which we have derived from these two equations, that is, F is equal to E times E and F is equal to M times E by equating those two terms. So, we have, we have got the acceleration part here. So, now, if a particle is moving across a magnetic field, it is accelerated at its right angle to the direction of motion, okay? So, this uh, statement indicates just now whatever we have got as our solution. That is, if a particle is moving across a magnetic field. So, here in this case, we have uh, uh, kind of, uh, we have seen the electric field. In the same way, for this uh, equation, we can uh, replace the electric field by magnetic field and uh, the behavior of the charge and the mass will not change. It will remain uh, as it is. So that's why they have mentioned it here. If a particle is moving across a magnetic field, it is accelerated at its right angles to in the, in the to the direction of motion. So, in case of electric field, uh, how the particle is accelerated? It, would, it is accelerated in the direction of electric field, right? So, if a particle is moving across the magnetic field, what is the difference here? Is it is accelerated at its right angles, okay? That is, uh, it is accelerated 90 degree away from the magnetic field. That's why this is a small relation here in uh, if we choose the electric field and the magnetic field to the direction of motion, okay. So, this point is very clear now. So, the force on the current element of length dl in a magnetic field B is given by this relation, that is, uh, rate of change of uh, rate of change of force, that is dF, is given as I cross B into dl, okay. So, now name this equation here as equation 3 now, okay. And here I have named it as equation 3. So, now the current in a conductor can be expressed as charge per unit time, okay. That is the current in a particular conductor, which is uh, uh, having n number of charges. Okay, we, we can respect it. Uh, we can uh, uh, form it with respect to time. One equation that is I is equal to Q by T. That is one uh, relation. Okay, so that is uh, you note that relation down that I is equal to Q by T. So now multiplying both sides by L. Okay, so now the quantity L we need to be multiplying on both sides of this equation. That is, we are getting I L is equal to Q L by T. Okay. In the same the same equation, if you uh, represent it in the vector form, what we will be getting is in vector form, I d L is equal to d q times b vector. Okay, so why this d q? Because in vector form, this q will be represented as d q, 
and l by t that is length by time is uh, represented by velocity okay velocity or we can say that velocity this length as we can uh, consider this length as uh, uh, displacement by time that is uh, whenever the charge is moving the charge is getting displaced from one point to other point okay that is with respect to time and that displacement with respect to time is mentioned there velocity okay so that's why i dl is equal to dq times v okay so now substitute equation 4 in e equation 3 that is whatever you have got here equation 4 substitute back that in equation 3 so now what we will be getting df is equal to so now if you cross multiply this that is i dl cross b dl so now what we will be getting dq into v cross b since we are having only one uh, cross b term here as it is so this uh, uh, v, cro v cross b uh, this cross b here it would come here as well and uh, in place of uh, i here ideal the rep uh, replacement is for dq into v cross b so this is one equation which we are getting for change in force rate of change of force that is df is equal to dq into v cross b okay this relation again we need to be knowing so now similarly for a single particle of charge e the relation for f is given as f is equal to uh, e times v cross b okay this is for a single parti uh, particle of charge this is the relation so this relation i have written it here so please note it down this is very important when we are solving problems as well so okay so therefore the total lorentz force is given by the first e uh, equation uh, uh, assumption which you have taken right that is uh, when you when you when it's accelerated in the direction of v you have taken one equation that is f is equal to e times e and here the relation which we have which we have got for a single particle that is f is equal to e times v cross b so equal uh, so add those two terms so since it is having the same quantity f so we need to be adding the terms which are on the right hand side so therefore the total lorentz force generated is f is equal to e times e plus q times v cross b okay so this is the equation again which we need to be remembering so this is the actual force on a acting on a moving charge okay it uh, depends on the electric field the charge enclosed and the velocity as well as the magnetic field okay both the electric field and magnetic field are proportion directly proportional to the force uh, generated here so therefore we can uh, conclude this uh, formula which we have got for a uh, force acting on a moving charge okay so this was one small derivation here okay so similarly let's see what is force on a differential current element okay now what is this force on a differential current, current element mean? That is force is equal, force on a differential current current element means that is the current would not be stable uh, whenever uh, in a particular conductor the current would be varying with respect to time okay so that's why whenever we have current varying with respect to time what is the force generated we need to be knowing okay so now let's see what is that force on the charged particle moving through the magnetic field is given by df is equal to dq into v cross v just now we have seen it that relation okay note it down and uh, take that as equation 1 also we know that dq is equal to rho v dv okay this also we have studied in module 1 that is uh, rho v is equal to v, dq by dv right so dq by dv this is d dq by dv so rho v is equal to dq by dv so that's why we can write that dq is equal to rho v into dv so that's why i'll take this relation also and name it as equation 2 and substitute equation 2 in equation 1 that is in place of dq here substitute rho v into dv and I rewrite this equation and name it as equation 3 also we know that j is equal to rho v times v okay this relation you might be knowing this we have studied this uh, relation in one of the very important concept which we have discussed in the previous classes you please try to recall it i am not telling it you i am not telling you again and again so this is a very important concept from where we have taken this data formula okay if you want you can refer our previous videos and check whether what is what is this relation called as okay those who are regular to this channel they might be knowing it so now substitute equation 4 in equation 3 okay we get df is equal to j cross v dv okay whenever we substitute this uh, j in place of j is equal to rho v times v okay if we substitute this back in equation 3 we will be getting df is equal to j cross v dv okay yeah so this is one more equation where this j is called as the current density okay so now Lorentz force equation for differential current element 
to given by df is equal to i del cross b okay so this where this i represents the change in current with respect to the uh, length of the conductor and this b represents the change in magnetic field okay and this uh, change in current density here in the small box i have written this uh, relation this is uh, if you want you can note this down it is not so important okay but here i have uh, written it to you all that is j into db is equal to kds into idl okay so that's why in place of j db i replace it as a f vector since uh, j j j is equal to rho v times v so if we if we take the integration of this uh, velocity it could be uh, converting into db and that db that is the rate of change of velocity is a displacement uh, is uh, given by displacement by time and this displacement is of course uh, when the relationship between current density and uh, force is applied so therefore this j db is uh, replaced by this force quantity so force is equal to line integral of i dl cross b okay, so force is equal to minus i if we take this uh, current uh, outside the integral the current might be either negative or positive so that's why for a safer side i have taken this i as negative so now this is line integral of b cross dl so therefore this is one uh, one more relation which we are obtaining that is f is equal to i into l cross b okay where this vector l represents the change in the length of a particular conductor with respect to time okay so that's why so this uh, relation also is very very important so please note it down so now let's come back to this equation uh, df is equal to i dl cross b so therefore the total force obtained by integrating over an entire length that is a cross b is equal to minus b cross a if we integrate this total force over an entire length of dl so this is the final relation which we are getting that is magnitude of f is equal to i b l sin theta since we have a cross product here we know that for any cross product the sign uh, the angle obtained is the sign angle okay so that's why we are getting f is equal to i b l sin theta and this is the force on the because of, uh, of the differential current element okay force on a differential current element this is the equation here which you have got that is uh, ma magnitude of f is equal to i b l sin theta so this is this is all about the force acting acting on a differential current element and also force due to a moving point moving charge we have discussed two important concept hope you understood these two concept please refer out the video and if you want you can note this down this is a very important question multiple times repeated question so that's why please uh, note it down okay and also comment down if you have, whether you have understood this concept clearly or not or how can i improve my teaching scale teaching style you can comment down you are free to comment down there are no restrictions so please comment and also be regular to this channel and uh, if you want you can check our playlist okay we have solved model paper solutions for uh, to you all so to see our playlist is available in the channel you can see on the right of your screen now so yeah it is appearing here so please check this uh, videos and uh, be updated to the channel like share subscribe thank you